morning. My name is Wendell George, and I am the projects coordinator for the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association. Um, welcome to the sixth annual Chefs in Schools cook-off and the seventh annual Chefs in Schools program. The program started in 2012 when a group of chefs, the St. Lucia culinary team, went to Miami to compete at the CHTA Taste of the Caribbean competition. And while they were there, they were looking for some initiative that they can do when they come back home to St. Lucia. So they decided to um, start off a Chefs in Schools program where they will get the opportunity to out, uh, reach out to the various schools around the island and to help inspire the up-and-coming young aspiring chefs um, like you all. Um, since 2012, the program has then culminated into a Chefs in Schools cook-off where we invited um, five schools to compete for a spot um, to represent St. Lucia at a Caribbean competition in Barbados called the Caribbean Junior Dueling Challenge. The first competition was in 2014 during the 46th um, anniversary of independence and we had uh, five schools compete at that event. The school who won the first competition is the Soufre Comprehensive Secondary School and round of applause for them. And um, in second place, we had Trozel, and then in third place, we had the Marigo Secondary School. And then from 2014, it only got better. Um, overall, we've, most of the winnings actually came from the Sufre Country School, uh, which is actually really good. Um, they've been doing a really good job down there between themselves and the and Chastney and Jade Mountain Hotel. Um, I'm not going to speak much on the and, and that because I don't want to be um, biased. Mm -hmm. However, um, I would say that a lot of good chefs come out of Anshasne. So um, kudos to the Anshasne team and the Super Comprehensive School for your successes so far. In addition, we've had uh, the Cicero Secondary School winning the competition as well in 2016. And this year, we're hoping to bring this competition to you guys again in Soufre this year, because Soufre is the current champions of the Chefs and Schools um, cook-off. And they went to Barbados and they defeated seven other islands in the region. They won. Um, I must say, what really makes St. Lucia so um, inspiring or so different from the other region, from the other islands in the region, is that St. Lucia is known for its flavors and its use of, of, of local ingredients in, in cooking. Every time we in Barbados and the students finish cooking, all of Barbados and the other islands come to St. Lucia's booth just to sample the little bits of stuff that's left out on the table. That's to show you how we've become a, a, a renowned you know, island in the region when it comes to culinary arts. So I want to encourage you all to keep aspiring to be whatever you want to be. If you want to become chefs or culinary arts professionals, take that serious and that will take you very, very far. Over the years, we've seen so many success stories. Um, we have young chefs who have come, come through this program and now employed within hotels around the island including Coconut Bay and Chastney Hotel, Chocolat, Sugar Beach, Cap Maison, um, Marigo Bay, Harbour Club, uh, you name it. Even at the Big Chef Steakhouse as well. So, students, if this is what you want to do, take yourself serious, take your act serious, and trust me, the opportunities will be limitless for you all. Believe me when I tell you this. I've seen this over the years, and I promise you, if you're serious about yourselves and about your careers, anything is possible. I'm excited and I hope that we can transmit in some ways that sort of excitement to the, to the students as well. This is an auspicious occasion in terms of the launch, but even more so the competition itself, based on the history up to where it is now, 
and where it can take us. And I can tell you on behalf of the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations that we are excited and they're excited about the competition. The reason is the stated objective of the competition based on the information we got include, include to expose students to the various aspects of culinary arts. In the school system, we do we did food and nutrition, and we're now doing food, nutrition, and health, but they are not necessarily providing us with the skills in terms of culinary arts in the same way such a competition would or such um, or exposure to culinary arts would. And for us, that's a big thing. Simply because in the world now, we're not just focusing on broad-based training, but training for work training for industry, hence we have culinary arts, um, food preparation, etc. Another objective, of course, is to um, provide competition con conditions for the students. And I would also say the teachers. I want to commend the teachers, um, Mr. George, because they've been relegated at the back of the room. They have been given um, a position of less auspicious than the rest of us, but they're the ones who are really and truly pushing the programs in the schools. I know some of these teachers personally, and some of them I've known forever and ever. And the, the programs, the, 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 the sacrifice that they make, they make, including bringing their own equipment and stuff to schools to assist in this program is, is, is invaluable and contributes to what has been happening. I would like us to give the teachers a rousing round of applause. <laughs> Another thing is that some of our teachers have not really been employed in industry. Um, some of them went straight through the education system and ended up as teachers. And there's a difference between the classroom and what obtains in industry. So this particular competition provides that avenue through which our teachers can gain that invaluable experience. I would also like to point out that this, uh, at this juncture that the SLHTA has been partnering with the Department of Education, spe specifically the TVET unit, to provide industry immersion for our teachers. So over the past two summers, our teachers have actually gone into industry, including Royalton and other hotels, to hone their skills so that they can then impart on the students who participate in this particular tournament. Congratulations to those people who participated last year and the year before. Special congratulations to Sufre Conference for winning, um, but that's not, that was not even the first time. And I'd like to say good luck to all of the schools, all of the schools. You're now starting on a level playing field in some, case, in some, case, in some ways. The person will emerge as the winner, or the school that will emerge as the winner will be the one who probably prepares the best, put in the most work, and who wants it more. At the end of the day, though, whoever wins, I know it's going to be something of quality, something that we can be proud of. And I look forward to us repeating Sufre's performance in the regional tournament. So on behalf of the Department of Education, Innovation, and Gender Relations, I'd like to thank you profusely again, SLHD and Winfresh. I'd like to thank the schools um, for turning up. That, that's important. And, and I look forward to a tremendous competition go, going forward. Thank you very much. We're very happy to be here. We're very happy to be on board to be the corporate sponsor for this activity. And I'm very pleased that um, one of our local people in the South took the prize. Don't get me wrong. It's, I don't think, and I really don't want it to be a tough competition. I want it to be something that's exciting, something that you know you like and you want to be there, okay? Um, don't make it a competition because if you make it a competition, you end up getting stressed out. So make it something fun, all right? Um, <laughs> um, so thank you for coming on board, everybody, especially the schools. Let me congratulate Super Comprehensive. And also I thank the SLHTA for accepting our sponsorship um, because we came at the last minute, as he, he said, and um, we're hoping to take it from there. Our products are very exciting products. They are really naturally made products, so no preservatives. You will see it for yourself. Um, and we're hoping to bring some more products on board so that you can use during that competition. For us at Winfresh, which I think most of you know has been a banana marketing company for many years, Winban, with Deco, Winfresh, we've been diversifying in an aggressive way. The banana industry is no longer what it used to be. Of course, we're still doing bananas. We still process bananas at our Winfresh UK office. We still market bananas in the UK. 
but recognizing the importance of keeping ourselves involved in what's happening in the Winter Islands and to promote the diversification aspects. We've moved into other products, utilizing local products from the various islands to ensure that we keep farmers employed and we keep the community involved in what's happening at this level. So for us at WinFresh and our subsidiaries, SunFresh based in St. Lucia, Vinci Fresh and Grand Fresh, which I think as we move forward, you'll learn a whole lot more about. It is an honor for us to be associated with this event, which we think will harness the development of young people in St. Lucia who are interested in culinary arts. For us and our involvement, our sponsorship demonstrates the value that we place on this profession. I, for one, spent some time in the industry and it was a very big eye opener for me to understand what actually the value of culinary arts is to this industry and the service sector. As I was saying, we produce a line of very healthy and wholesome products, which we are certain will add value to our kitchens and our restaurants in the markets we serve. And we wouldn't want the industry to miss out on utilizing those products to enhance our offerings. At the table, you will see our marinades, our sauces. We have jellies and juices. And of course, there's H2O water, which is produced right here in St. Lucia. Now, the difference between H2O and all the other waters around is that we, we produce a water which is enhanced with minerals, particularly calcium, which is good for growth, for older people like me, for athletes. And many people are not familiar with that as yet. And as we move forward, we're hoping that more of that water will get into, 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 into the market, and particularly this sector. We will also introduce very shortly some flavored water and sparkling water, which I'm sure will excite the culinary industry and, in fact, the hotel and restaurant sector. And it is for these very reasons, all of those offerings, all of those good, wholesome products that we've engaged the SLHCA to make available these products to you. And we're hoping to take that to the chefs and to the purchasing and F&B managers more and more already. We are in partnership with some of the hotels in terms of our water, but we're hoping that we'll be able to expand those products in the sector to enhance what you do and, in fact, to help the, the agricultural sector in producing for the hospitality sector so that our restaurants and hotels will have products which are better, more wholesome, and healthier. It is our hope that through this competition, more young persons will be attracted to this profession. And it will enhance the taste of St. Lucia and the taste of the region. Of course, we know about Taste of the Caribbean, which is a major event being held now in Florida for where chefs participate in those competitions. And in fact, the competition for our school chefs in the Caribbean. We're hoping that our taste will attract more people to our destination, will make our destination a more hospitable one, and of course, contribute better to the development of our economy and create more employment for our people. It is therefore our wish at WinFresh that all of the participants have the very best of this competition, that you enjoy it, that you participate fully, and we're looking forward to seeing more of you contributing to this sector as chefs, as cooks, as people participating in the sector. But of course, you have to aim for the, for the highest level, which is a very prestigious job in this sector, the chef, who most people sometimes have not recognized as much as they should. And we'd like to congratulate you for taking part in this competition and hope that you enjoy it in every way possible. We would like to see the very best of you, not just in this competition, but later on in life, later on in life as you contribute to the development of this sector. I thank you very much and I wish you all the best. In the competition, we, it's going to be two students and a coach. So you, you will be getting a coach from a hotel, um, different hotels, so that the coach can, can work with you all uh, with the infusing you know, the local ingredients and everything to, to the rules. Um, with that, the first round, we're going to have a, a signature dish. Now, the signature dish, let's think local. Let's think, you know, like something our grandmother was doing before, you know, but with a twist. 
you know something different it's not like a green fig and softy salad like everybody know how to do it you can do something different with it um right there at big gardens uh, we just like everybody know what's a hamburger but we're doing like a chef peter he puts has something on his menu which is a lobster and lionfish burger so it's just like a twist everybody when they think about lobster, they think about grilled lobster, garlic sauce, creole sauce. But you know, but we think something different. Peter thinks something different, so we did a twist with it, you know. So let's think about something like this. A little twist to the local dish that you have in mind. And um, as we said, you have a coach who will be working with you. Um, so you'll be having like uh, 60 minutes. 60 minutes to create your dish. I mean, with your coach, you'll be practicing. You know exactly what you're going to do. So... You can come to the thing. Um, we're going to send the you give them the ingredients before, man. Yeah. So you you get a list. We will send an email with the list of the ingredients that everybody will have, so you can practice, so you know exactly what it is. You know, so you can focus. I know everybody will be nervous, but still, you know, you can practice, and your coach will be there with you, so that they can guide you. You know. So um, after the signature dish, um, the the first, second, and third place will be qualified for the mystery basket. And the mystery basket, so nobody knows what's in the mystery basket. So you're going to get it on your table, and when you uncover the mystery basket, you will, you might get some strange thing. I know last year we had like lionfish in there. Yeah, we had quite a, you know, a couple of local things that, local ingredients that you had to use. You don't have to use all in the basket, but it has to be on your menu, whatever you have in your mystery basket. And then you'll be getting 30 minutes, so that means like, you really have to speed it up. You know, so yeah, <laughs> it, it don't sound like a, a, a long time. That's why you all have, you mustn't go complicated. So whatever your coach will, is doing with you, you have to think about something nice, simple, and you know the flavor, the taste, everything is there. All right, let's try our best not to go over time, because every time you go over time, we'll be detecting some points from you. All right, and um, as I said, Windell will be sending the the copy of the the list, um, the ingredients list, and the rules and everything for the teachers, so you all can go through it with the students and the coaches. The concept is called Share the Love. What is Share the Love? Well, Share the Love for me is two things. It's, it's the, the love of the cuisine, the love of local ingredients, the love of passion that we, we, we deal with food with me, but it also means St. Lucia, STL, if you think about it. So Share the Love, St. Lucia. So that, that's what for me it means as well. But it also means the love is about when you were growing up as a kid, and I'm part of the Jamaican, Barbadian, and St. Lucian flag now, so um, the love for me is when I was growing up as a kid, my mom used to love cooking, and I, then I took the passion of cooking with her. I was from 14 years old, I was cooking at home, and I was doing the same sort of chicken and rice, and then I'd put my little tomato rolls on top of it, and of course, my brothers and sisters goes, get rid of that stuff, give us the real food, you know? And even from then, I was 14, I was doing small plates, but I knew that I loved to cook. I knew that there's there a definition to uh, being a chef than being a cook. So, and I just give you a little, little joke. When I was 16, I went for my first interview. My mom sat next to me in an interview and pushed me along, you know what I mean? So, my, the love is the cooking. It's the love is the seasoning. I don't want us to lose that. St. Lucia is a destination now. People talking about a destination for St. Lucia. Our passion is about culinary. How do we recognize our cuisine to become the passion? You can create ideas, but do not lose mom's love. Mom's love is a seasoning. It's the idea that when you wash your chicken, don't just put it in water, wash it with like a lime, look like at vinegar. The, the idea is that when you're gonna um, season your fish, you know you gotta look at, look at love in there, look at celery, look at you know, tilo and everything else. These are what makes us unique as Caribbean and what makes us original as St. Lucian. Now to the most exciting part of the day, where I will announce which schools will be placed at which hotel for training. First up, we have the Enchipo Secondary School, who has been assigned to the St. James's Club Morgan Bay, St. Lucia. And we have a representative from St. James's Club, uh, Mr. Andrew. Francis and Andrew, yes. And we have another representative who, somewhere in the back, um, Chef Jamal as well. So they're here to cheer you guys on. They're here to um, 
excite you about the prospects of this competition because trust me it's going to be fun first and foremost it's important to have fun all right if you don't have fun when you do your work it's going to be fun <laughs> i mean you, you know you know the rest all right the second school is the Sir Ira Simmons Secondary School. They will be placed with the Sanders Grand St. Lucian's Palm Beach Resort. <laughs> the chef who will work with the Sir Ira Simmons Secondary School um, is uh, Chef Sarah George from Sanders Grand. <laughs> Sarah is actually a former student of the Sir Ira Simmons Secondary School. <laughs> And she also received the scholarship from the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association to study um, culinary arts. She's actually finishing off right now. So you'll be executive chef? Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's actually finishing up her bachelor's. I think the only thing she's missing right now is the uh, internship. And then she should be done. Yes, Sarah? Yeah. You'll be executive Correct. chef. And she'll hopefully be the, the first St. Lucian executive chef, yes? Yeah. Female executive chef. All right, the next school is the Bamudo Secondary School. They have been um, assigned to the Big Gardens Beach Resort. Well, Big Gardens Resort. <laughs> Bamudo, please stand up. Bamudo Secondary School. Uh, we have a representative from um, the Big Gardens Beach Resort, uh, Chef Peter Lawrence. And for those who don't know Peter, Peter has been in the industry for a number of years, way before you were born. And Peter has competed in SLHTA competitions for a number of years as well. He recently competed at the CHTA Taste of the Caribbean competition in the seafood category and got a gold medal in that competition. So Peter is our celebrity chef today, yes? <laughs> All right. Um, from the John Odlum Secondary School, they have been placed with the Marigo Bay Resort and Marina. Marigo Bay, please stand up. Chef Billy is representing Marigo Bay Resort. <laughs> Chef Billy um, is not a St. Lucian by birth, but he has adopted St. Lucia. He really loves the island. Um, he has worked with the culinary team over the years and has participated in the Chefs in Schools program and trained um, students before. So he's really passionate about it and hence the reason why he's always involved. So kudos to you, Chef. Thank you for supporting. <laughs> the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School has been assigned to the Sandals Halsey and Beach Resort and Spa. <laughs> Castries Compre, please stand. All right, thank you. The representative from the Sanders House could not attend because of some corporate meetings and stuff. Um, but they're in full support, and I've gotten that confirmation from the executive chef and GM at the hotel. So once we're done here, I will give you contact information for the chef so that you can start the proceedings. The Leon Hess Comprehensive Secondary School have been assigned to Cap Maison Hotel. Leon Hess, please stand. Um, the chef from Cap Maison is Chef Billy Morissette. Billy, please stand. So this is the Cap Maison and Leon Hess team. From the St. Joseph's Convent, um, they have been assigned to the Windjammer Landing Villa Beach Resort and Spa. You. And we have a representative from the Windjammer Landing. Well, two representatives, uh, Chef Nisa Paul and Mike Keller is also here to support. <laughs> Nisa Paul also represented St. Lucia at the Taste of the Caribbean competition in 2017 and 2018. And she also received, I think, the silver and bronze medals at the competition as well. The Angers Secondary School will be assigned to Coconut Bay Beach Resort and Spa. All right. 
And we have a representative from Coconut Bay in the back, uh, Chef. Please stand. Michael. Chef Michael is here again this year. Chef Michael, I remember you were there last year, right? Correct, yes. So Coconut Bay is always on board with the um, Chefs in Schools competition. The Chozel Secondary School has been assigned to Ladera Resort. Um, the chef could not attend today, um, but I have the blessings of the GM and the executive chef as well. So you guys are good, all right? And our defending champions, Soufre Compré, has been assigned to the Anchastney and Jade Mountain Resorts. All right? I'm not sure what happened, but the executive chef couldn't make it this morning, although he said he would. But um, definitely they have the support. You have their support for the training. All right? So those are the 10 schools competing in this year's competition. The competition will be held at the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School on the 7th and 8th of May. So you have approximately a month and a week to practice as often and as much as possible. Um, practice your signature dish, perfect it, and on the day you come and you execute, all right? It's possible, guys. One month you might think, boy, you know, I have school, I'm preparing for tests, you know, I have my own personal life. But trust me, it's going to be an experience you will love and you will cherish for a lifetime. You're going to look at your photos today, five years from now, and you'll be like, look at me. I was so meg back then, huh? <laughs> it's true. Um, so guys, this is the opportunity that the SLHJ is presenting to you all. Um, you have been selected because your teacher felt that you were the best in your group. So please don't let your teachers down. Don't let yourself down and make the best of this opportunity. Um, we have in our midst the, the team manager for the St. Lucia Culinary Team 2019, Chef Richardson Skinner. I will allow him to come up just to introduce himself briefly and give you um, an idea of who he is and his role on the St. Lucia Culinary Team. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed right now because I'm seeing something that I've never seen before. You know, in my time, when you would go home and tell your parents that you want to be a chef. You say, what, a cook? Why you want to be a cook? Yeah. It was almost a sort of a degrading kind of a, kind of a job. And I think, you know, walking into this room today and seeing all these young faces, it just reassures me that there's a future for culinary. And I feel very excited about that. Um, my name is Richardson Skinner. I'm the manager of the culinary team at St. Lucia. And naturally, being the manager of that team, I think that I have to get involved in the... Uh, schools in program as well because obviously you're the ones who are going to take over from us. I, I consider myself on the way out. I, I, I look younger than, than I actually am. I wouldn't give you all my age <laughs> but I'm not young. Okay. And uh, I, I'll just like to give you all a little sneak peek of the life of a chef so you all kind of get an understanding of what it takes to be a chef. I think everybody echoed the very same sentiment on this table when they say that the first thing that counts is passion and love. And, and that is very, very true. That is not just talk. It is real. And I'll tell you why. To be a chef, it requires a lot, a lot of physical and mental hard work. Now, I know that many people who have different fields will defend and say, well, my job is hard as well. But I don't know about the other jobs. I know about a chef. And it requires a lot, a lot of hard work. Now, here is what you all are going to eventually find out if you all decide to stay in this field of culinary is that you don't look at money as the motivation in the beginning. Don't look at money at all as the motivation. If you do that, you're going to fail. What you need to do is first find out if you actually love this, this field of work. And it, I mean, it will, it will come natural. If it is cut out for you, it will come natural. The time that you all are starting is very important. Forget what everybody else see. 
If you don't start at this age to figure out what you want to do with your life, there's a very good chance you're going to fail or you're going to live an entire miserable life. This is the time in which you need to figure out, am I really going to be a chef or not? Mm -hmm. Right? And your gut will tell you. Remember what I'm saying to you. Your gut will tell you if this is for you or if it's not for you. The good thing about you all that I didn't have is that you all have support from hotels, from SLHTA, that will give you all that opportunity to find out whether you all want to do this or whether you all don't want to do it. Okay? Take that opportunity, embrace it, and find out if this is what you want to do. Once you realize there's a passion for it, then you need to put your heart and soul into it. Stay in school. Stay in school. It will help. Not everybody might afford to go to fancy culinary school, but stay in school and understand the basic of how to do math, how to, to read, to comprehend. Please do it. You're not going to reach executive chef stage if you don't have that. Right? So most people figure, you know, look, I feel I want to do that, so you know, I'll just put aside the books. Don't put aside the books. You need to get that in, and you need to get it in right. So when you start to perform as a professional, you have that foundation to build on. Creativity will come with time. No matter what you learn, what school you go in and sit, and they teach you about, yeah, you know, if you want to make a nice souffle, this is what you do, and all of these fancy things. When you step into that kitchen, this is where you create and develop your own identity as a chef. And time, only time, will allow you to do so, right? So you have to apply yourself, and you have to give in 100% every time you go at it, and eventually, this is what I want you all to get. It will become a very glamorous life. It is a glamorous life if you put in the work. You will get paid very well, and you will be recognized, and people will respect you. Our interest in this competition is to help boost the hospitality sector, to help boost the culinary arts in particular. I mean, I was involved in the sector before, having worked with the SLHCA, and we recognize the value of culinary arts to, to our market and the contribution it makes to our farmers who produce those products, who, which we manufacture. And as a result, we felt an obligation to help develop the sector, to help develop the young persons who are interested in culinary arts, and in fact, to boost the St. Lucia product as a whole. As I indicated, we have a line of healthy, wholesome products, and we're hoping to be able to market them within the sector also to ensure that the sector utilizes those products because we are confident that our products are healthy and better than most of the other products, if not all, on the market. And as a result, we would not want the industry to miss the opportunity to utilize these products to be able to enhance what you offer to guests and, in fact, to continue to boost the hospitality sector, which is now the leading sector in the country. We are very much involved in trying to create the sort of health um, uh, awareness among our population. That's why our, our motto is now live well. If you look at our, our logo, it says win fresh, live well. We would like people to improve what they do, what they eat, what they consume. And, and that's our ethos. We actually try to mirror UK standards. In fact, in the UK now, you can't sell water mm -hmm. and call it bottled water if it's not enriched with minerals and in particular calcium. And that's why we established that standard to ensure mm -hmm. that we provide that quality of product to, to our country. So generally, we will be out there supporting national events, school events, um, uh, even carnival in some of the islands to ensure that the, there is awareness of those health, wholesome, enriched products so that the society can begin to improve what it takes and um, uh, ensure that we have a healthier and better society going forward. My name is Kayla Hannes Dendi Joseph and I am a 16 year old girl going to Super Comprehensive Secondary School and I'm excited to go to this, to be a part of this competition because I think it's a great opportunity for a young girl like me to be in something so great and inspiring. It inspired me to do cooking. I always love food, like I would taste something and be like, oh my gosh, what is in that? What combination made that taste? And ever since I was a little girl, my stepfather, he loves cooking and stuff, but he's a police officer, so he's a home cook. And so I picked up on certain things he would do, and he, we love watching Food Network together. I mean, Bobby Faye is my favorite chef, <laughs> and some people will not like him, but I like him. And, you know, that's what inspires me, and food, I mean, who doesn't love food?
think being placed at Anis Chastney is a great opportunity because Anis Chastney is known for the food and the hospitality in Sufre. So I'm really excited to work with the chef and the hotel.